Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the webinar on how to build confidence and appear confident as a speaker. When you're presenting or when you're training, when you're engaging an audience and trying to get your message across, the level of confidence that you bring to that platform can determine how successful you are. Now, it's really about confidence in terms of how well you appear confident and how well you know your content and how comfortable you are being on the platform before that audience. Being confident does not mean you don't have nerves. Being confident does not mean you are completely fear of, free of fear or free of anxiety. But as a speaker, you need to build confidence and you need to appear confidence. You need to appear confident for that audience. There's a few names that I haven't seen before on the webinar, so just to make sure that you know how to participate within this webinar, it will last for one hour and I will also do a recording of the webinar. So if you want to go back at any stage, you can ask me for the recording and I will make that available to you. So how to, how to participate, please ask questions. Ask questions as we go and every now and then I'm going to pause for a moment and put up a question slide and that's when I'd like to take questions also, but don't just wait for that question slide. Ask a question anytime. Two ways you can, you can ask questions. Number one, you have that little dialogue box, the question box. Please type in straight away. At any stage, type that question in and I'll see that and I can answer it. The second way is to raise your hand. You've got a little icon that if you click on that icon, your hand will go up and I will see it and I can then open up your microphone. And when I open your microphone, you can then ask the question as we go. So please take notes, even though I can make the recording available to you, it's, it's handy for you to take notes. And more importantly, I think if you can apply the content or apply, I guess, what I'm talking about to a real presentation, and that might be a presentation that you've done in the past or a presentation that you've got planned for the future. How could have you used some of this material that I'm presenting you to enhance your confidence in a previous workshop or what can you incorporate in a workshop that's coming up or a presentation that's coming up or a seminar that you've got coming up. It's, it's the thinking and the applying that's going to give you the, the greatest benefit. So my hope would be that each of you walk away with two or three practical skills so the next time you are before an audience, you can be more confident in your presentation. Okay. I was lucky enough to attend a workshop by Michael Grinder in the United States uh, in July last year and Michael said and talks about this all the time, the importance of being confident. And he said, the number one barrier that will hold you back in your speaking, your training and your presentations is your own self-belief. So what he means is the thing that's going to hold people back is their own, their own confidence, their own self-belief, their own feelings around how well they're doing. And so many of us have got messages, we've got ideas, we've got knowledge that we need to share or we want to advocate or we want to raise an issue that we're really quite passionate about, but the thing holding us back is our own self-confidence. So if all of you could go away with two or three skills from this one hour webinar to help you be more, more confident within yourself, in your ability to present, then, then I've done a great job. And that's my aim for today. Those of you who attended last week's webinar, you will remember that I spoke about the impact of your presentation depends on a number of aspects. And that includes having great content. And that includes having great connection. Last week's was having about credibility, having great credibility. And 
of course, this week's webinar is about having great confidence. If you lack any one of those, i.e. you don't have credibility, you will lessen your impact. You'll lessen the outcome that you have on those people. If you're not seen as confident, if you don't come across as a confident speaker, then once again, you will have less impact. If you don't connect with the audience, you may be really confident, you may, very, you may be very credible, you may be the best in the world at this, and you may have brilliant content, but if you come across as arrogant and self-conceited and you don't connect with the audience, you may not have the impact. Today is around confidence. So that's my, my little formula. It's the four C's of your presentation impact. Now, let me dispel one of the myths up front if I can. Confidence is not about having no nerves. It is not about being free of fear. It's not about not being anxious. It's not about avoiding stage fright. Confidence is about doing a good job and being aware of that with your nerves, with a level of anxiety. It's, it's not about being free of those things. So if I can dispel one of those myths straight away, and indeed in my workshops, my open public speaking workshops, one of the things that some people say to me, Peter, how can I get rid of the nerves before I do my public speaking? How can I be totally free of fear or anxiety before I do public speaking? No, it's not about being free of the nerves, it's about learning to control those nerves. That is the secret to being confident, not eliminating but rather controlling, understanding the role that nerves and anxiety have and then you will appear and then you will come across as being really confident. So what's some steps that you can do, some practical steps that you can do to appear and come across as more confident? And I'm going to cover all these today. So know your topic. Know your topic inside out. Know your audience. Understand what the audience wants. Uh, understand their needs. Just really make sure that you are aware of the language the audience uses and you will appear really confident. Know your venue. This is where you're presenting. This is the room, the training room. Just be really familiar. So when you walk on that platform, when you walk on the stage, you basically own it. And that's one of the best ways of appearing confident if you want to think of it as, I guess, faking it, appearing confident while inside you're still quite nervous. The way you walk around, the way you hold your body language on that platform can can portray confidence when even inside you may be still feeling nervous. And that's fine. That's fine. But to do that, to own your platform, you need to know your venue. Learn to control nerves. So some steps that are going to help you put those nerves under control. So we're not going to eliminate them, but how can you, con how can you control them? Reframing, some changing of your mindset some looking at things from a different direction, that'll help you appear to be more confident. When you're genuine and authentic, really your nerves don't matter. When you are genuine and authentic, people just think you're so confident and make sure everything you do is congruent with who you are, congruent with your message. These seven steps will help you from the audience's perspective appear really confident, really calm, appear as though you're in the groove and you don't have a worry in the world. Even if on stage you are feeling a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious yourself. Let's get started and remember do ask questions as we go. So know your topic well. Good presenters don't use notes. So it's really about speaking extemporaneously. You know your content so well that you don't you don't have to read from your notes. In fact, no no great speaker would would read from their notes. It's about knowing your topic so well that you can speak to three or four points that you've got maybe on 
one sheet of paper, maybe three or four points you've got anchored in your mind in some sort of mind map, but you need to be able to present with no notes. And in my workshop on, on presentation skills, I teach people that framework of how you can you can anchor a speech around three or four points, a beginning, a middle and an end, and then weaving in stories and anecdotes and metaphors and how you can then confidently present for half an hour, one hour or two hours without notes. You need to be able to respond to questions, difficult questions, left field questions. I tell people before you go to a workshop, think of a question that you don't want to be asked. Think of a question that you were, if you were to be asked that question, you would, you'd squirm, you'd squirm in your seat. And then I tell you to prepare an answer for both those questions. The one you don't want to be answer, the one you don't want to be asked, and the one that if you are asked is really going to make you worry. Have an answer for those questions. Know how to respond to questions. If you're good at responding to questions, you can be really confident because no matter what they throw at you, you've got it covered. Know where to get extra information. Know how to support your content. Even difficult questions, maybe you can't answer everything but you know where to go and get it. And if you've got this really good, good background of contacts, of resources, of friends, of colleagues that work in, in the area or maybe work in a niche area just adjacent to maybe your topic and you can refer to get those difficult questions then you can be really confident. I don't have to worry about anything here, I've got all my bases covered. One of the things I speak about when I work with leaders is leadership, great leadership is not about knowing everything but it's about knowing where to get the answers. So make sure you really understand your topic and where you can get extra information. Try and use good data and this comes down to credibility as well. Data that's reputable. Try to reference the data. The quote that I had earlier on comes from Michael Grinder. Michael Grinder is the world expert in nonverbal communication. That quote around, around, around confidence that holds people back. So make sure you have good data, make sure you can source it, make sure you can reference it. The Australian Bureau, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, World Health Organisation, UNESCO, then you can relax, you can be more confident because if people probe, if people disagree with you, if people decide to take an opposing position, at least you know you've got good data to back your position up and at the end of the day, it could be that they have to disagree, but you haven't been discredited. You haven't been made look silly because you've got good data. You know where to get extra, extra information. You're presenting without notes and you've got great answers for people's questions. And finally, learn to be flexible with time. So when you know your topic really well, what that means is you can deliver your content, your core message within 20 minutes, within half an hour, within an hour. You can just cut your cloth to suit the time you've got available. And what that means is, and what causes a lot of people to lose confidence is, let's say the person before you speaks for 10 minutes into your time and your 30 minute presentation now becomes 20 minutes and people panic and think, well I can't do this, I had 30 minutes but you need to be able to cut your presentation down seamlessly and deliver the same content, have the same impact within 20 minutes. And of course the converse or the reverse happens and you need to be able to cope with it. The speaker before you doesn't turn up. The conference organiser or, or the meeting chairman says, Peter can you speak for an extra 15 minutes to help cover the gap? Can you do that? You need to be able to do that. So this is flexibility around your topic. Being able, being able to deliver it in half the time, being able to deliver it in twice the time. Being able to respond to questions, not needing notes. And 
When I say no notes, I really mean don't read from notes. You can have your notes available and you can always go back and check some data. You can always go across and check a quote if you can't remember someone's quote, but it's not reading from the script. It's, it's delivering most of your presentation without the need for notes. That gives you great confidence and that gives the audience great confidence in you. So that's the first thing you need to do. Really know your topic. Within, within public speaking, what we call that is you need to be able to plug and play. And plug and play is I can take you anywhere in the world under any circumstances and plug you into the wall or put you on the platform, put you on the podium and you're ready to go. In 10 minutes, in 20 minutes, in half an hour, in fact, you can present a two-hour, half-day seminar if you need to on your topic because you know your content so well. So get used to the concept and ask yourself, am I ready to plug and play? When you can plug and play, you look really confident. The second thing that's going to really help you be confident is knowing your audience and knowing their needs. A lot of nervousness around public speaking is, what if I say the wrong thing? What if the audience doesn't like me? What if they don't get my message? What if my message misses the mark? So what you need to know is what is the audience's needs? And you really need to work out what they want and put your message, craft your message in their language. Craft your message in addressing their concerns. So do some stuff like, like a pre-workshop questionnaire. Do your research. What's, what's their, who was the last speaker who spoke? How are they received? What's happening within that industry? Talk to people who work within the, within the industry. Talk to people who work within that organisation. Find out from their, their annual reports. Find out from their website, what are their values? What values are people bringing to this organisation? Can you incorporate those values in your presentation? What's their, what's their mission? What's their vision? Look at their annual report. Try and get in, into their, their headspace. The reason this is so important, because public speaking is not about you, it is about the audience. And that's one of the things where being confident really depends from what the audience thinks. And some of the most confident people I know, they don't have a nerve in their body, stand up, they speak, they spray the audience with verbal diarrhoea, they don't make one mistake, and the audience just, just doesn't like them because they're speaking about what they want to say and they've had no consideration for what the audience wants. I've seen speakers that tell me, that self-disclose, that they're dying on stage, and I see the audiences just lapping up everything they say. It's because they've taken the time to walk in their audience's footsteps. They've taken the time to understand the needs, the wants, the pain, the concerns of that audience. When you know your audience really well, you look really confident. You appear confident and the audience just loves your content and they don't notice anything else because your message is targeted so well. So to know your audience, it's really about what's in it for me. So if I'm sitting in your seminar, I'm saying to me, I'm saying to myself, what's in it for me? So you need to answer that. And what you can do is you can think about most audiences have got some form of pain, some form of concern, some form of problem, some form of barrier, or they have some desires, they have some goals they want to achieve, they want to reach their key performance indicators, somewhere they want to get in their lives. This is called the pain to pleasure continuum, alleviating pain is a stronger motivator than creating pleasure. So you really need to ask yourself, where is my audience hurting? 
and it's about doing it's about doing that homework it's about knowing your audience where are they hurting what do they need or what are they trying to achieve and how can I address that issue another way of I guess thinking about it is in terms of the pain what is what is keeping your audience up at night what's giving them nightmares what are they thinking about what are they worrying about at night and then make sure your presentation your material answers that question or alternatively if it's not a pain issue what are they daydreaming about during the day I can't wait to retire um, I just need to make sure I get my super superannuation in place uh, I'm really looking forward to my next holiday <laughs> I've got three things I need to do to to com to complete my key performance indicators and then how does your message help them reach that goal as I said if you can alleviate pain that is a stronger motivator generally than creating pleasure so you need to work out what is it that your audience needs to hear from you in your area your area of content all this really is it's marketing 101 and it's really about turning your message into rather than you selling it or pushing your message this is what you need to do these are the four steps you need to do it moves from push marketing into pull marketing so really you're not even selling it the audience says aha I need some of that and they buy it off you as opposed to you selling your message because this is the best thing since sliced bread so you need to start to think about what is it that your your audience wants from you in your area of expertise and it's about walking in their footsteps how do you know what their dreams are or how do you know what my nightmares are you need to walk 30 moons in your enemy's moccasins before you can begin to understand them you need to get into my my space you need to understand what's happening for me you need to get into my moccasins the best speakers craft their content craft their message so that it answers a problem a need that all the audience has and the people just buy that message and walk away with an idea that they can now move forward use the right language that your audience understands use their jargon their lingo if you can do that then the audience knows you've spent the time to understand them this is a great way of, of someone appearing confident someone that uses the right language has taken the time to speak the right language I work a lot with people in the mining and the oil and gas sector I need to use particular stories particular examples that gives me some understanding and of course the area area that I pick to talk about is health and safety because I can't talk about drilling and 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 uh, exploration and also geology because that's not my level of expertise or I have no knowledge or no experience but I can talk about health and safety when I work with health professionals I use a different language when I speak with financial planners and superannuation consultants I need to use different language so this is about knowing your audience inside out I'm going to pause for a moment and just see if there's any questions once again type the questions into the dialogue box or put your hand up and I will open up your microphone and someone's just just typed a question um, regarding the audience and knowing their language what you do if it's a mixed audience or like a community group and 
in some ways that's that's even harder um, because there's no one story. So you need to pick those generic stories, those those community stories, and it's really hard to study that audience. They don't have a particular corporate vision or corporate mission, but you have an idea of what their values are. And when I'm doing a workshop, an open workshop with mixed uh, mixed people, I sometimes send out a pre-workshop questionnaire. Uh, what are the two or three biggest problems you experience when you're public speaking? Uh, can you tell me about a time when you really struggled with public speaking and what went wrong and what would you like to learn to fix that? And when people send me those responses, I've got an idea of who my audience uh, of who's in my audience and also what key messages they want and where, where, their, where their pain is, where their hurt is. But also because I run a workshop or I do seminars on overcoming fear of public speaking, people self-select. Therefore I already know the values of that audience are they want to become more confident and more effective in their public speaking, whether they speak in a mining mining setup or whether they speak in a health setup? Great question. So it can be a little bit more difficult when you have a mixed mixed audience, but still do the same level of homework. Okay, we're still on the preparation. So first, first point was around preparation and knowing your content. The second point was around preparation and knowing your audience. And the third point is still around preparation and it's about knowing your venue. And I mentioned about walking on the platform. You can be really nervous and walk on the platform with confidence and walk on the platform like you own the platform and the audience thinks, wow, this person's really confident. It's not so much that you are brimming with confidence, it's more that you've done your preparation you've done your background, you understand your room. So there's just a few simple things that you should check off about your venue and there's a few things that are not there, like know how to get to your venue. Make sure you don't get lost. Uh, I've been to a workshop where everyone was there and the presenter rocked up 10 minutes late. Sorry guys, I went to the wrong venue. Um, that doesn't look good. As a presenter, in fact, be the first person to arrive and be the last person to leave. That helps you with your confidence as well. Are you going to use a sound system? What sort of sound system is there? Is it a handheld microphone? Is it a lapel microphone? If it is a handheld microphone, do you know how to use one? How are you going to gesture with holding one hand around the microphone and only one hand left to do your gesturing. Can you still gesture? Do you know not to let that hand that's holding the microphone gradually drop down? Will your voice without a sound system, will your voice reach the back of the room? Are you going to use PowerPoint? Is there a screen? What if PowerPoint stops? What if the power goes out? Can you still deliver your presentation? Have you got some video? Is the video embedded in PowerPoint or, or are you running it off a CD? Know the stage, know the platform. Lighting, some stages have dark spots and light spots. Important that you need to work out where the light spots are. Some of our big convention centres in Perth have got big Roman columns uh, holding up the roof and as you move across the stage, you obscure yourself from some part of the audience. If you walk too far left or too far right, you need to know all that beforehand. So it's about getting to your venue and owning the platform. Walk the platform. Also, take some time to sit in some of the seats. Get a bird's eye view from the audience's perspective. Often when you're sitting in different places in the auditorium, this is before anyone else has arrived, you can identify problems or some issues that you won't find just by standing on the platform. So not only walk on the platform, walk around the venue and take some seats in strategic places within the room. 
is your platform raised? Are there steps up to the platform? Is there a screen, a data projector screen? Is it on the side? Is it in the middle? Is there a lectern? What side is the lectern? Are you going to use a lectern? I encourage people not to use a lectern. So are you able to leave the lectern and move into the middle of the room? This is about really knowing your venue. An example is, I guess, a lecturer within a university. And let's say the lecturer is running a little bit late and as he walks into the room, the room is full of all the students and they're talking about the weekend, they're throwing paper aeroplanes across the room, they're throwing screwed up pieces of paper, balls at each other and they're just having a really great time. And the lecturer walks in, those students own that room. The lecturer now has to work and force himself to take over control of that room, to take over control of that venue. As a speaker, as a presenter, as a workshop coordinator, don't let that happen. If you've ever been to a presentation where the speaker is already there and they're waiting at the door and as you walk in, the speaker shakes your hand one by one and says, Hi, good afternoon, my name's Peter, pleased to meet you. Hi, my name's Peter, glad you could make it. And then when you take your seat, you understand that speaker already owns the room. You really need to know your venue inside out. What if the power goes off? What if something else happens? What if the DVD doesn't play? Can you still deliver? And that's about knowing your content as well. The beauty of doing all of those things, knowing your content, knowing your audience, knowing your venue, is that you've now eliminated all the what ifs. What if this happens? What if this goes wrong? You've got it covered. So preparation along those three levels is probably the key, the key ingredient to being more confident. Being more confident yourself, you've got all the bases covered, but also appearing more confident to the audience. Okay. Now I'm going to give you some tips to help you control your nerves and to help you relax more. And it's not free of nerves, but it's in control of your nerves. Within public speaking, we talk about the butterflies in your stomach, so you know how you're about to be introduced as the next speaker, and you get all these knots and butterflies. So what we say is don't try, don't try and eliminate the butterflies. Rather, learn to make the butterflies fly in formation. So it's about harnessing that nervous energy as opposed to, as opposed to eliminating it. If I can leave you with another metaphor around nerves, think of your nerves or your anxiety around just like a, uh, like a bunch of wild horses. I guess in Australia we call those wild horses brumbies. So think of your nerves as these brumbies and wild horses, they run everywhere, left, right and centre, flat out, they go over, over fences, over trees, uh, the hair, uh, and the wind is just flowing in their manes and they are out of control. Don't don't shoot the Brumbies, don't try and kill them, instead try to tame them. Try to tame those Brumbies and they'll take you on the ride of your life. So don't try and shoot those nerves, just try and harness your nervous energy and as a presenter they'll take you on the ride of your life. So one of the myths of public speaking is how do I get rid of nerves? It's not about getting rid of nerves, it's about controlling them. And that's what point four is about. The role of nerves. Nerves are really important in peak performance. Nerves will put you in that state of mind so you can have maximum impact. Sally Pearson won the gold medal in the 110 metre women's hurdles in 2012. She was interviewed before the gold medal final and she said, she was asked if she was nervous and she says, yes, yes I'm nervous. I was nervous because it's the Olympic Games, but I'm glad to have nerves today. If I don't have nerves, then I'm not ready. If you don't have nerves, you're not ready to speak. 
if you don't have nerves you'll come across as blasé, you'll come across as flat, you'll come across as uninterested, you'll come across as I've got better things to do with my time than speak to you people. So that nerves just helps you put you in that peak performance mode. But of course I don't want your nervous energy to be so high that you really do struggle. It's about controlling the nerves, not eliminating them. Ringo Starr. I was reading this headline from a from a London tabloid. And you have to love the uh, the tabloids in in London they they love to they love to come up with fancy names and this is called they've labeled this pukey in the sky with diamonds and it's about Ringo Starr that ever since he's been performing and even up today he has stage fright and he talks about suffering from stage fright so badly that he vomits some occasions before going on stage but as soon as he's on stage, he then performs beautifully. So with stage fright, with nerves, with anxiety, just understand that it's there, but it's not going to stop you from appearing confident. Nobody knows that Ringo Starr is dying as he's about to go on stage. No one knows he's really nervous because he comes across so confident. He's one of the Beatles. And even today when he plays drums for other bands, he's just comes across so confident. So it's not that he's, it's almost that he's faking it until he makes it. And he said that he doesn't think he's ever, he's 70 years old, he never thinks he's going to get rid of these high levels of nerves, this stage fright. Myself as a speaker, I always get nervous before presentations but I just understand that's me and I just get straight into it and I just love delivering my workshops with my nerves. The audience has no idea that I'm nervous. The audience, when I get them to talk about my first five minutes, what did I do as in terms of a presentation and they look at my body language and my content and one of the things they seem to always say is, well Peter you're so confident and I find that amazing. Here I am really nervous and quite anxious and the audience sees me confident. Really great lesson there. So some tools to help you control your nerves and not eliminate them. Learn to relax. Learn some quick relaxation techniques. I don't mind whether you do yoga or whether you do meditation. Just learn to relax. I mean life is sometimes stressful and we feel ourselves you know just going too hard and it's nice to be able to just pull back and do a quick relaxation technique. Do visualization. Part of me walking on the platform and also walking around the stage and that's especially in those big keynotes that I do with 200, 300 people, part of that is visualizing visualizing the audience applauding me as I as I let them know my take home message. Uh, it's getting really f familiar with the platform. So one of the things you can do with visualization is because you've been there early, it's almost like you've already done the presentation. So when you do the presentation for real, it's second time round and you've already nailed it the first time. So you're just so more confident in delivering it the second time. You've already been on the stage. There's a tool in neuro-linguistic programming um, also called NLP for those of you who know or have heard of NLP called future pacing and it's almost visualizing but taking it to another level. You've been on stage in your mind, you've delivered the whole presentation, the audience has applauded and it's done and dusted. You've future paced the whole event, your whole presentation in your mind. Learn to do some deep breathing and deep breathing is down in the diaphragm, not up here in the chest, up in the higher part, right down, right down near your belly button. So when you breathe in, the diaphragm goes out. When you breathe out, the diaphragm goes in like a balloon. If when you're breathing, your diaphragm's not moving in or out, it means you're doing shallow breathing 
and what you'll notice is your shoulders will probably go up and down as you breathe in and out. That is shallow breathing. One of the deep breathing exercises that I teach participants of my workshop, breathe in for four seconds, hold that for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds and do that four times. That's called four by four by four by four. Practice mindfulness. Do positive affirmations. Whatever happens, then I'll be able to handle it. Whatever happens, I can handle it. Make your tools quick and easily available. So find those relaxation, visualization, deep breathing techniques that you can do fairly rapidly. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about reframing. So once again, it's not getting rid of nerves, it's an alternative way of looking at your nerves, a different way reframing your nerves. So the first reframe is replace your nerves with excitement. So instead of being nervous, I want you to be excited. What happens when you get excited before you before you speak. When you're excited, your heart pounds, your, your adrenaline flows, your blood vessels vasoconstrict, they get smaller, you have that little bit of a shake, you have that quiver in your voice and you are excited. Physiologically, it's the same response as when you're nervous. So I just want you to reframe it. Don't think you're nervous anymore, think you're excited. And don't be afraid to tell, tell the audience, look, I'm really excited to be here today. I'm, I'm so excited that my heart's pounding and, and my palms are a little bit sweaty. I'm excited. You're about to get on the world's tallest roller coaster ride. Are you nervous or are you excited? It doesn't really, really matter all that much. Your body is treating it the same way. So you in your mind, you can choose to be excited. Reframe number one. Number two, get rid of public speaking. Just have a conversation. So I don't want you to do public speaking anymore. In fact, you can remove public speaking from your vocabulary. What I want you to do is just have a chat with the people in the room, all 200 of them. One of the things I notice is when I'm talking to people, they arrive at my workshop early, I have a chat with them, they're very eloquent, they're very confident, they smile, they've got a beautiful voice and then when I get them to stand up in front of a group of people, they change, something changes, they stand upright, they must throw a like a switch within themselves, they put a plum in their mouth and all of a sudden they start doing something different to what they were doing when they were talking with me one-on-one -on -one, or when they were chatting with me over morning and afternoon tea. Don't do anything different than when you do your conversation. Just take that conversational style, that idea, of, that, idea that I'm going to have a conversation with the people in the room, take that to the platform. Within Australia, the Aboriginal people just have this idea of having a yarn. They're just going to have a yarn with the people. That's what public speaking is. All the best public speakers just have a conversation. You don't have to do proper, practice, perfect presentations. Third one, I call this, I call this the Chinese way. I guess I could call it the Asian way. And it's about being respectful to your audience. Remember I said public speaking is about the audience. It's not about you. So when you're nervous, when you go on stage and you're feeling really nervous, you understand you're taking energy from the audience to focus on yourself. When you're on stage, because it's about the audience, your focus should be 100% towards the audience. You should be worrying about their concerns. You should be worrying about how can your message help them get to a better place in their life. If you're not 100% focused, then you're not giving the audience the best of you. Nerves or nervousness is a state of self. In fact, some people say that nervousness when speaking is a state of selfishness. If you're nervous, you're focusing on you and you're robbing, you're stealing 
energy information from the audience. And when I work with, with Asian people, they're a very respectful culture. And when I say, well, nervousness is, is in fact meaning you're not giving it your best shot for the audience, you're, 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 you're robbing some of your content from the audience, they sort of they sort of sit up and they say, well, hang on, I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm, I want to give the audience 100%. And they just throw this little switch in their mind and they understand they're still nervous. They park their nerves to one side. They jump on the stage. They give it 100% the best they can for the audience. Then they step off the stage and they pick up their nerves as they leave. So there's three reframes. No more nerves, just excitement. No more public speaking, just a conversation. Nervousness means you're focusing on you, therefore you are robbing your audience, which could be seen as being a little bit disrespectful. So focus on the audience 100%. Questions? Just going to pause for a moment. I've got a question about the reframing um, and there are other ways of reframing and I guess just thinking, it's not sort of tricking yourself, it's just deciding to look at things from another perspective and that perspective helps you, I guess, understand the concept a little bit better or, or, or helps you understand the problem in a different light and you can now see a way out. With those reframes, I'm just suggesting maybe one of them will work for you. Maybe one of them you can adopt that reframe as you're about to be introduced and speak before a group of people. I'm not nervous, I'm excited. You choose which reframe works best for you. I'm not saying do all three of them. What can you do to, to look at your nerves from a different perspective? and still do a really great, a really confident job with your nerves because you're not nervous, you're excited. I'll leave that to you to choose which reframe works best. Any other questions? And feel free to keep typing. I'll just move on. You need to be authentic, you need to be genuine, you need to be honest and you need to be sincere. So this is the attitude. And it's about bringing your your authentic self. And I was talking about the person that was having a conversation with me and then when they stand in front of the group of people, they change, they throw this metaphorical switch, they stand upright, they put a plum in their mouth and they now speak proper, perfect. And that's a little bit non-authentic, that's a little bit non-genuine. So you really need, if you want to be seen as confident, you need to come across as very honest, very sincere and very genuine. And the beauty of this is you can do these things and not be perfect. Some research identified that honesty was the number one trait that is admired, that is admired in leadership by, I guess, by workers and also by staff. So more than product knowledge, uh, more than problem solving ability, more than project management, th that leader who is absolute honest and sincere was held in higher esteem and greater respect by the workforce. So do you pass the test? Are you authentic when you present? Are you genuine? So it needs to be the real you. So I'm happy for you to fake your confidence, i.e. walk on the platform and do things that a confident person would do, but I don't want you to fake your presentation. I don't want you to fake and become someone else. Julia Gillard, during her time as Prime Minister, sometimes didn't enjoy the connection with the audience, uh, with the Australian people. Maybe sometimes she didn't enjoy that level of connection and respect that perhaps she deserved. And in one of the election campaigns, they had to start again after two weeks and the rest of the campaign we we're now going to see the real Julia. So the first two weeks weren't the real Julia. And I still time I still sometimes wonder if I've ever seen the real Julia Gillard. A little bit fake 
certainly it's a tough job. Now, when Julia Gillard's father died, she spoke in Parliament, she spoke spoke to the press, she spoke to the people of Australia about her father, uh, the role he'd played in her life, how much she respected him, how much she admired him, and how he was really proud of her. And during that two to three week period, when she was mourning and, and speaking about her father, her approval rating went through the roof. Just for that moment, just for that window period, we saw the real Julia. Be natural, be authentic, be genuine, make mistakes. Make mistakes. It's okay. Uh, when you make mistakes as a presenter, it shows that you're human. And by mistakes, I mean, you know, stumble across a few words, mix up a few facts. I don't mean make mistakes in terms of, um, you know, completely lying. It's okay to forget some material. You can always weave it back. Don't be perfect. Don't strive to be perfect. Don't strive for perfection. In fact, there's a quote that I used in my other webinar, and it, it comes from the Harvard Business Review, and it says, focus on connection, not perfection. So these, these attitudes, the authenticness, the genuine, the honest, and the sincere, they're going to help you connect. They're not about being perfect. It's about the connection. So feel free to focus on the connection and make a few mistakes. When you make mistakes, the audience understands you're human, the audience understands you're real. And finally, you need to be congruent with your message. This will help you appear to be really confident. It'll help you be confident as well. Do you live your message? Do you believe in your message? Is your body language in line with your message? The time management guru who starts their workshop late. The financial planner who talks about the importance of investing in growth assets and only borrowing money to invest in, in shares and uh, property, things that will grow, that also drives a BMW or a Mercedes and they've borrowed money and that's a depreciation that's a depreciating asset. So what they're telling people, what they're talking about is not what they do. It's a little bit about walking the talk. So are you congruent? Are you consistent? Do you believe in your message? One of the hard things to do is to take someone else's message, someone else's slides, and go out and then present and you don't believe it's the right thing to do, you don't agree with the HR manager that's given you this new policy to roll out, if you don't believe in your own message, if you're not congruent with what you're saying, why would the audience believe your message? When you're congruent, when you're consistent, you appear really confident and you can be confident as well because you know that you live your message. So the next steps for you, from those seven things I've outlined, and there's been several sub points, three reframes, what two or three things can you do differently so that when you walk on that platform, you're going to appear more confident and you're going to feel more confident within yourself? And maybe even the nervousness, the level of anxiety will come down just a little bit. But it's not about eliminating the anxiety completely. What can you do? Because webinars can be very nice and the information uh, can be really helpful, but until you implement it, nothing changes. It was Albert Einstein who defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different outcome. So I would encourage you to take two or three things from the webinar. If you need to recap, send me an email uh, in the next day or two and I'll make the recording available for you. But do something different as a result of what you've learnt today. Feel free to send me an email if you have any further questions. I'm just going to pause for a moment. We've still got 
Still got a couple of minutes to go, so feel free to type those last questions in. So we've got someone listening without a microphone, and that's and that's fine. Um, you can type your question in, and next time if you don't have a microphone, you can also dial in using the free the free phone number, and that gives you a pin. And then when you dial in with that pin, I can open up the telephone and you can answer questions. But not to worry; it says you don't have any questions anyhow. But you can always participate as you go. So just to let you know, um, some upcoming workshops, I've got lots. I've got lots in Perth, in Caratha, in Melbourne, in Coffs Harbour and in, also in Grafton, Bendigo and Mildura. I go Australia wide. Just have a look at my workshop, uh, at, at my website for my workshops. I do update them. So Wednesday this week, winning presentation skills. So those of you who are in Perth who want to become more confident, I think a, a one-day workshop would be a great place to start and you'll receive feedback within the workshop and you'll also receive feedback from other people in the room on how confident you appear. I'm not going to dwell on these, um, they are available. Like me on Facebook if you want to, uh, I also post some helpful, helpful tips on Facebook just about every day, uh, you can follow me, my blog on my website, please ask further questions and if I can be of any further assistance, 